A Schofield soldier who grew up in Hawaii is in federal custody, accused of having ties to the terrorist group ISIS. 34-year-old Ikaika Kang was arrested on Saturday at his home in Waipahu. The U.S. Army says Kang is an active duty soldier assigned to Schofield Barracks. The FBI says Kang has been under investigation for over a year, and they believe that Kang was acting alone. So what is he accused of, and what happens next? We have several reports tonight. Alexander Zane spoke with Kang's father. Elisa Arevalo got reaction from the Wahiwa community. We begin with Manolo Morales, who joins us with more on this developing story. Manolo? Joe Kang made his first appearance in federal court today, heavily guarded with his hands and legs shackled. We learned from court records that Kang displayed radical views for years. According to the criminal complaint filed by the FBI, Kang swore his allegiance to ISIS, known as Bayat. He also attempted to provide classified military documents to the terrorist group and also tried to provide training exercises. He even videotaped some of them. Because he had shown an increased inclination to violence. Probable cause, probable cause arrest was made in the interest of public safety. Records say Kang wanted to provide information to ISIS on basic training, mixed martial arts, and basic rifle marksmanship. Kang did not just provide sensitive documents. Prosecutors tell us that he also contributed to ISIS to help fund a drone. With the intent that it would be provided to ISIS, providing combatives training to an individual he believed was affiliated with ISIS. Court records show that Kang had displayed radical views in the years past while he was in the Army. In 2011, he was reported for having pro-ISIS views. His security clearance was revoked in 2012, but a year later, it was reinstated. Court records revealed that Kang publicly showed his extremist views, like conducting research on YouTube about the most effective and painful ways people had been tortured. But it wasn't until early 2016 when the Army determined that Kang was becoming radicalized, which then contacted the FBI in August 2016, leading to his arrest on Saturday. The U.S. Army was very vigilant uh, in this investigation, uh, and they brought the matter to our attention. Uh, we worked very cooperatively throughout, and uh, I'd like to actually thank the Army uh, investigative resources. On the day he was arrested, court documents show that after taking the ISIS pledge, Kang allegedly said he wanted to take his rifle and kill a bunch of people. Kang remains in federal custody. His next hearing is set for Thursday. We'll let you know what happens. Manola Morales, KHON, 2 News. We spoke with Ikaika Kang's father. He says he's surprised by what happened and noticed a change in his son's behavior when he returned from deployment to Iraq. Alexander Zanes has more from Kang's father. Alexander? Yeah, Joe, I spoke to Ikaika Kang's family this afternoon after this, his father rather, outside of his Kailua home. His father tells me that his son came home no less than a month ago to cook out with his family. Now, Clifford Kang tells me his son, since his son Ikaika returned from deployment, he was more reserved and kept to himself. He said he never heard his son speak about ISIS and he's still in shock. Kang describes his son as a Waimanalo boy who likes to surf, saying he couldn't afford college, so he wanted his son to join the service and learn a trade. Why would he do that? You know, he got everything going for him. Uh, I just don't understand it. Uh, I, I told him, uh, I was very concerned when he came back from uh, uh, Afghanistan and uh, uh, Iraq that uh, maybe he had PTSD. Yeah. So I felt that if there's anybody that knows little about PTSD, it's me, because I've been up there in 20 years with uh, Vietnam veterans at right. the VA. He had the Quran, uh, and he gave me one, and he kind of pushed me to, uh, you know, study it. So I'd uh, make like I read it, but I didn't. I, I use every excuse because I have my faith. Again, Kang described his son as withdrawn after he got back from serving a tour in Iraq. He said he speak to his son monthly. And Kang says he'll be in court Thursday when his son appears. And we'll also have more on this interview tonight at 10 o'clock. Reporting live in Kailua, Alexander Zanes, KHON 2 News. People in Wahiwa are stunned by the news, calling it too close to home. Elisa Arevalo continues our coverage tonight and joins us from Wahiwa with community reaction. Elisa. Joe, Wahiwa 
town is just a short drive away from Schofield Barracks, and military pride is a really big part of the community out here. So as you can imagine, people were, like you said, stunned to find out about Kang's arrest. Every year here, they have a very big Veterans Day parade, along with a parade on Memorial Day on the main street over here. Almost everywhere you turn in Wahiwa, there are businesses who advertise for military service in their storefronts, and many of them just couldn't believe that one of their own is accused of trying to help the enemy. It's terrible, you know, um, pretty close to home. So it wasn't, you know, something you don't expect from this kind of community and the people that are here. But, you know, anything can happen. That is ridiculous. I can I, when I first said that, I was just, I didn't know what to say. I mean, I've been on Schofield a lot, and I've talked to a lot of the soldiers, and they're all pretty genuine guys. But when you said that, I just could not believe that actually happened this close around here. We reached out to the United States Army for a statement. They did confirm that Kang was assigned to school field barracks. We also learned Kang joined the Army in December of 2001 and was a decorated soldier. He's received the Army Achievement Medal, the Army Good Conduct Medal, and the National Defense Medal, along with several others. Joe, back to you. Thank you. We've posted the entire criminal complaint against Ikaika Kang on our website, khon2.com. We'll continue to follow this story and bring you any new developments on air and online. This is not the first time a Hawaii resident has been accused of leaking classified information. We were the first to break the story in 2013 of Benjamin Bishop a former defense contractor who leaked government secrets to his Chinese girlfriend. He pled guilty to espionage charges in 2014 and was sentenced to seven years in prison in 2014. And in 2011, Maui resident Noshir Gowadia was sentenced to 32 years in prison for selling classified U.S. secrets to the Chinese. Gowadia was one of the creators of the B-2 stealth bomber. He was first arrested in October of 2005.